Hello everyone and welcome to today's video, which is the final video in the series on creating the sweet spot table commonly used in venture capital. Thus far, we've gone through and set up our Excel sheet, laid out our global assumptions that we'll be using, and calculated IRR, which will be the metric that we are then sensitizing across a range of different scenarios. After setting up our data table in the previous video, we're now going to actually calculate the information we need in the table laid out here. So the first thing that we need to do is show this data table what item we are looking to sensitize. And that is the IRR in cell C23. So we put it in the top left corner that is still touching the table we are going to create. The next thing that we're gonna do is starting on cell E29 and then highlighting all the way to the bottom corner where we have both an exit value and an MOIC, we're going to create a data table. There are some shortcuts you can use to do this, but if you don't have access to the same operating system as me, you might not have those work. So we're gonna show the manual way to select a data table. So we're gonna go up to the ribbon and select data, go to the what if analysis and click the drop down, and then click data table. What it's going to ask us for is a row input cell and a column input cell. This confuses a lot of people and if you don't do data tables often, it's one of the first things most people have to go back and get a refresher on. The way I think about it is the row is the data that is laid out all in one row. The column is the data that is laid out all in one column. So what we're going to select for the row input cell is the MOIC that we use to calculate our base IRR. So we click cell C9. For the column input cell, the second metric we look at is what year do we exit? And that is year six shown in cell C11. Once we've selected both of these, we click OK. We get a range of data, which we're gonna format quickly. And then we're gonna check it for accuracy. The way that we would do that is we know in our base case, we are exiting at five times our money in year six. That gives us an IRR of 30.8%. So we should see at five times in year six, 30.8%. Perfect, so the table is functioning properly. What we now have here is laying out the different IRRs that we would see under different assumptions for when we exit our investment and the money on invested capital we receive back. One final piece of cleaning that I like to do here is I will take the text in this cell and change the text color to white so it doesn't show up as just a lone floating percentage. And so we've covered it. How do you create this table? One note that I didn't get the chance to make in the previous video, but wanted to call out here is, why do we need to go through custom formatting to show exit in year four? Why couldn't we just type exit in year four? What this table is doing is it's identifying the two numbers that we're using to drive our output that we're sensitizing. And then from there, it's plugging in different numbers and calculating an output. If we were to just type exit in year four, it wouldn't show up as a number, it would show up as text. As a result, the table breaks. So that's what we want to do, is show it as a number, which we've then formatted. This video and this video series is part of a class I teach on financial modeling and evaluation. If you have any questions about the video series here, the videos on this channel or the course, please feel free to reach out to me through comments or direct messages to the YouTube channel. Thank you and have a great day.